Hello everyone and welcome to the RTA's webinar on the new web services bulk on lodgement, um, plus a little bit more. So my name is Lynn Smith, I'm with the communication and education team. I've been with the RTA for over 16 years in two main areas of our education area and also in our dispute resolution area. Today, I'm also joined by Kath Seven, who has been heavily involved with the project web services and the bulk bond lodgement. So thanks Kath for helping out today as our subject expert. Um, and for our audience today, what's your role and how long have you been with the RTA? Thanks Lynn and good morning everyone. Happy to be here with you all. Um, I've been at the RTA now for 12 years. Um, I've worked in majority of the areas across the RTA um, and most recently just been focusing on the web services project. Um, so I've been working on that and now currently back in my bond management team leader role. Great. And we also have Lauren from our outreach team helping us today and providing us with some support in the background just in case of any um, technical issues and also helping out for our questions as well. So before I do start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which we are holding today's webinar and where you are also joining us from and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. So with today's presentation, we're going to cover off on bond legislation requirements, the RTA's web services and how the bulk bond lodgements will work. So we're going to be playing you a short demonstration video during the session. And we'll be also looking at the benefits for you as a managing agent and also where you can find some more resources to help you. I'll also talk about an update with the Office of Fair Trading and the RTA investigations. So if you are a licensed agent or property manager, this will actually have an impact on you. And at the end, we'll address your questions. And please note, we cannot provide you with legal advice. And as always, you're encouraged to seek your own independent advice to make informed decisions. Today, we also wanna hear from you. So our webinar will start with a poll very shortly just to see um, where you're joining us from today, and also to see how often you do use the RTA's web services. So we will have a question session before the webinar is finished, and we'd love to receive your questions. So please use that little chat function or that little speech bubble on your Zoom toolbar, rather than the Q&A box. So if you look at the screen, um, you'll see that little image of that speech bubble. We also wanna hear from you on how today went, and importantly, what future topics you'd like to know more about, and also any feedback on the RTA's web services. So please look out for the survey at the end of the webinar. It takes about one, one and a half minutes um, at the most to complete. So we'll get started and um, I'll just launch a poll. So this one is a two part poll. Um, so what we're looking for is whereabouts you're joining us today, and also how often you actually use our web services. So if I could get you to just complete that poll for me, that would be great. So your web services, that's what's covering, you know, all the processes about lodgements, refunds, your change of contributors, your dispute resolution process, and also updating your details. And that web services you can use 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And also too, I know that we do have a lot of property managers joining us today, but we also have some student providers and other managing organisations as well. So welcome today. So that poll open for just a moment longer. Um, so it looks like um, we have um, about 33% of us are in Southeast Queensland, um, followed by Brisbane and, but a big hello to our Central Queensland and Western Queensland people as well. And in relation to our web services, um, it looks like about half of you are actually using it several times a week, which is really, really great. And for the people who don't use web services, hopefully we can actually um, give you more information today on where you can find some resources to be able to jump on board. I'll just end that poll. Thanks everybody. Okay, close that. Okay, so let's kick on. Our first topic is about the legislation requirements. And for a lot of you, this isn't new. So this is, hasn't been changed. It's been in place since the Residential Tenancies Act of 94 days. So the legislation will outline the maximum amount of bond that can be charged, 
but also says that the bond needs to be lodged with the RTA. So section 116 is very clear that it needs to be lodged with the RTA within 10 days, and that is calendar days, not business days. So for real estate agencies and managers, please check your practices on when you lodge your bonds. We have been saying this for some time now. So if you are doing mid and end of month disbursements only, then that may not be meeting that 10 day requirement. Best practice would be to choose one day each week, disperse weekly to the RTA to make sure that you do meet that legislation timeframe. And we do know the trust account systems out there do allow for more regular disbursements. You may already be aware of the RTA's web services for all the bond related transactions and updating your details and your dispute resolution. But what we are going to go through today is what has also been added to this, and that is the ability to lodge many bonds or your bond increases in one transaction. So remember, you do have to accept the terms and conditions and you will need to log in with your unique QGov identity. So this new process is really aimed for those managing um, parties, such as your real estate agents, your property managers, on-site managers, and also your student accommodation providers or your park managers. And two, any joint landlords who may own or manage a lot of properties and are lodging bonds. So these are the people who are regularly lodging numerous bonds in one go. So for this process, you're going to need your RTA ID number. And for those who do lodge bulk bonds, you do, we do know that you will have one. And as I said before, this process is lodging new rental bonds or doing the bond increases. So there is a maximum of 50 transactions that you can do and the maximum total of that transaction cannot exceed $50,000. So if you look at the right-hand side of your slide, you will actually be able to see um, the process. It gives you step-by-step -step along the way. And at the end, you'll be able to print or save a summary of each of the individual lodgements and also your summary page that you have submitted. So just to give you an example, an individual summary is on your left-hand side of the screen and your bulk summary is on the right-hand side. So we are going to be playing a short demonstration video shortly um, and we'll show you how it works. And if you're already familiar with our single bond lodgements, you'll find that this is very similar process. So Kath, I'm just going to come back over to you. Um, just be, uh, share some information with the audience just before we play that video. So over to you. Thanks, Lynn. So with the bulk bond lodgement um, web service, you will be able to have the ability to stop and start. So you will be able to say, start your web service bulk lodgement on a Monday and then add five, say on that day. And then you can come back on Wednesday and add another three um, before you actually lodge. So you can actually build it up over the, over the period of a week. Um, once you actually submit the bulk bond lodgement um, to the RTA, you will then be taken to a payment page where you'll be able to have access to a BPAY code and you'll be able to pay the whole lodgement in one transaction with that code. However, what you need to know is if you start that batch and you don't submit it within 10 days of adding that first either an increase or new bond to the batch, the batch will be automatically deleted after that 10 days. So again, best business practice would be to ensure that you're lodging every week to avoid any issues. During the process, there is reminders repeatedly through when is the due date of the bulk bond lodgement. We also send a seven day reminder to make sure that you are submitting within that day, 10 day timeframe. Um, as you go through the service, um, the, any problems, you will get error boxes. So it's very intuitive and it's designed to talk you through the whole process. Um, an example of this um, would be that you must complete or remove the incomplete new lodgement before you can continue. You will have the ability to resume an incomplete lodgement or remove it. The system allows you to go back into a lodgement and do edits before you actually submit. So you'll be able to have time to actually review what you've entered. If there's anything you need to correct, you can go back and edit before you submit.
So again, another example of a, of a um, information box that will pop up. Um, you can go back, as I said, and edit um, any lodgement that you've added and you need to make a correction. Um, it is important to note that you will need to click continue and move through the screens again if you've gone back to edit, just to make sure you don't lose your changes. Again, information boxes that will help you out throughout the whole process. This is the BPAY reference page. So once you actually submit the bulk bond lodgement, whether it's a mixture of all new bonds or a mix of increase in new, um, you'll receive a notification of BPAY and this will be through smart services. So let's run through the demonstration video um, and I'll be back shortly to go through some of the resources and then Lynn will go through the Office of Fair Trading and what's happening in that space. On Lodgement web service page on the RTA website. Click on the Start Now button to begin. Here you'll see the terms and conditions for using RTA web services. Click on the checkbox to agree. Next, you'll need to authenticate your identity using QGov. Enter your QGov username and password. Once logged in, you can begin using the Bulk Bond Lodgement web service. You'll first need to answer some basic questions about the properties you manage. And there are helpful hints to guide you along the way if you're unsure of any of the answers. Make sure you check your details and enter a contact phone number. Next, enter your RTA ID and the main email address that your organisation or joint lesser partnership uses to interact with the RTA. Next, it's important that you read these instructions as it tells you how to navigate this web service. You'll then start at the bond increase page where you can input any bond increases you want to add to your bulk bond lodgement. At the bottom of this page, you'll see a section which calculates the number of bond increases and bond lodgements that have been added to the web service. As you continue, this section will calculate the total amount owed for the bulk bond lodgement. To add a bond increase, click on the Add Bond Increase button on this page. Enter the bond number for the bond you want to top up. Check the details of the bond and the bond contributors to ensure they're correct. Then enter the new rent and bond amounts. You can choose to split the bond increase equally between the contributors or you can allocate different amounts to each contributor. If the tenancy end date has changed, you can also update it here. If the RTA doesn't have an email address on record for any of the bond contributors, you'll be asked to enter it here. Each bond contributor must have a unique email address to be able to use this web service. Enter the email addresses accurately to ensure they receive the required notifications. When you've entered all the necessary details for a bond increase, you'll reach a summary page which has all the details you've just entered. Check that these are correct and use the edit functionality if you need to make any changes. You can print a copy of the bond increase or save it as a PDF on this page. Once that's done, add your bond increase to the bulk bond lodgement. As you go through the web service, messages will occasionally pop up, reminding you that the bulk lodgement will be deleted if it's not submitted within 10 days of adding the first bond to the batch. This is in line with legislative requirements, which state that a bond must be lodged by the managing party within 10 days of receiving payment from the bond contributors. Once you've added all bond increases to the bulk lodgement, click on the continue button. 
This is the new lodgements page. Click on the add new lodgement button to add a bond to the bulk lodgement. You'll then need to add the property details. In this case, we're going to submit a lodgement for a rooming accommodation rental. The process for lodging a bond is exactly the same as when it's lodged through the RTA single bond lodgement web service. Once you've completed the lodgement, it will be added to the bond lodgement summary page. To make things easier for caravan and rooming accommodation providers, you can click on the add button to lodge a bond for another room or dwelling at the same address. Once you've added all your bond lodgements and bond increases, click on the continue button to go to the bulk bond lodgement summary page. Check all your bonds and bond increases to make sure the information is correct. Remember that you can use the edit button if you need to go back and change anything. Once you've checked all the details are correct, click the submit button to finalise and submit your bulk bond lodgement. After you've submitted your bulk bond lodgement to the RTA, you'll be taken to this page where you can choose to print or save a summary of the bulk bond lodgement using the print my summary button. You can then proceed to payment. A BPAY code will be generated and you can use this to pay for the bulk bond lodgement. Once payment has been received and processed by the RTA, you'll receive an acknowledgement of rental bond for the bulk bond lodgement. Okay. Thanks, Lynn. Just so um, hopefully that video helps that um, to show that it's quite an easy process to use. Yeah. Um, and we know that agents have been asking for this um, and the opportunity to lodge multiple bonds in the one transaction. So the benefits of this bond lodgement include everything that you can see on your screen. Um, but mostly it's more convenient and it will save you time as you're not relying on the post to get all those bonds and, the, and a check to the RTA. It also allows the RTA to process your requests really quickly. So it, it will be a matter of days before you just have those bond numbers and acknowledgements because once we get the payment, it's all done very quickly. So you'll get them earlier than if you had posted them to us. If you, of course, like all our other forms, if you don't use web services and you still wish to do bond lodgement via paper form, this, that's still available to you. But I will suggest that if you're using the paper form, please make sure that all fields are completed and it's important that the writing is illegible and also that the checks all add up to the total of the bonds that you're lodging. Now, the RTA is producing multiple um, resources available to you to try to make this service as easy as possible for you. There's frequently asked questions, there's guides. You will have access to the video that we've just shown you again, and that's all on our RTA website. Over to you, Lynn. Great, thanks, Kat. Um, so just in summary, the steps that you're going to see on your screen now is how this process works. So, you need to enter your details. Remember, this is your organisation and your RTA ID. You can add bond increases um, or you can just do new bonds. So your bond top-ups. So if you're um, increasing the rent and the bond is going up as well, so these are your bond top-ups. Or a brand new tenancy and you're doing um, new bonds. Um, if it's new bonds, you just go straight to lodging the new bonds. You can also review the lodgement details before you submit, which is what Kath was going through. And there's also, um, as I said, anytime you can do those sort of edits before you submit that um, final lodgement, and then you pay via BPAY. But if you are only just lodging a single bond, then you can use that normal single bond lodgement process. So again, this process is showing you how to do that multiple bonds in one go. Now I'm just going to launch another poll. So just bear with me. Um, we're just wanting to have a bit of an understanding 
um, would you feel comfortable using the RTA Web Services bulk bond lodgement process? Having seen a little bit of what might actually happen, as Kath said, it's quite, in, um, you'll see boxes come up if it's um, got errors or that you need to do something. Um, so I'll just quickly get you to do that poll if you wouldn't mind, just seeing how comfortable you might feel in using this process. I just leave that um, open. Um, so we're having sort of like about 90, 92% of you say that you do feel comfortable um, using the process. Um, and we do have probably about just under 10% saying um, not quite sure. So thank you so much. I'll just end that. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to go now into talking about the Office of Fair Trading. So the RTA has been working with the Office of Fair Trading in relation to amendments to the Agents Financial Administration Regulation 2014. So this is going to support the real estate agents and the letting agents to use the online payment platforms. So that's your BPAY. So it will also ensure you as a licensed managing agent can meet your record keeping requirements for your trust account. So again, you're going to be able to use that BPAY to do your bulk bond lodgements. So the RTA and, and Office Fair Trading have also joined forces and signed a memorandum of understanding. So we will be working much more closely with OFT. So this is in relation to investigations and will have an impact for licensed agents, letting agents and your property managers. So Office of Fair Training can only investigate offences committed by a licensed real estate agent. They can't investigate in relation to tenants or private landlords. So there are two areas um, during a tenancy where an incident can occur that's an offence against legislation that both the RTA and the Office of Fair Trading enforce. And these are when a rental bond is not paid to the RTA within 10 days and when rent payment is used for another purpose. So this could be that using rent towards a water bill or for cleaning. So customers can contact the RTA wishing to make an investigation request against a licensed agent, but they may be redirected to Office Fair Trading on these two offences. So the RTA will always retain the investigations on any other alleged breaches of the Residential Tenancies and Room Accommodation Act 2008. And also if the RTA, we will also retain it. If it's, um, as an example, failure to lodge the bond with the RTA um, by an agent, um, but it's also got another investigation um, or alleged or for alleged offences. So as an example, if it's a failure to lodge the bond, plus not providing the appropriate documentation at the start of the tenancy or having unlawful terms or unlawfully entering the property, then the RTA will retain that investigation. So what does that mean? So I'll just click over just so that you can actually have a look at what the penalty provisions are for both the Residential Tenancies and Room Accommodation Act and the Agents Financial Administration Act and the Property Occupation Act. So the RTRA Act penalty units is 40 units under section 116. Also sections 117 and 119 also have 40 penalty units as well each. Um, and that relates to your bond instalments and your roomy accommodation. But under AFA Act, Section 16, this talks about dealing with an amount on a receipt and also pay it into an agent's trust account, or your Section 22 is about permitted drawings from a trust account. Under Section 206 of the Property Occupation Act, this section talks about wrongful conversion on false accounts, meaning they receive an amount belonging to someone else or falsely accounts for that money. For the rent used for another purpose, and again, as I said before, this could be used in that you're using rent towards a water bill or that there's maybe overpaid rent that's been put towards cleaning or damages. So with this section, you'll see that the RTRA Act has a maximum of 40 penalty units under section 96. However, under the Agents Financial Administration Act, Section 21.2, when payments may be made from the trust accounts, an amount may be paid from a trust account only in a way that's permitted under the Act. 
So I think it's quite clear, and as you can see, Office of Fair Trading have some significant penalties under their legislation. So one penalty unit as of 1 July 2021 this year was worth $137.85. But if you're a corporation, then that's times five that. So when you start looking at the penalty units themselves, this can certainly be significant. So the penalty unit amount is not set by the RTA or the Office of Fair Trading. It's set by the Queensland Penalties and Sentence Regulation, and it's enforced by SPUR, which is the State Penalties Enforcement Registry. So if you need information on the Property Occupation Act or the Agents Financial Administration Act, or your uh, real estate licensing requirements, then we'd say, please go to the Office of Fair Trading's website. Um, you can find that qld.gov.au forward slash law forward slash fair trading. And on the main page, you'll see a box regarding the regulated industries, including that property industry side. So the RTA website also has a section on our investigations. So to request an investigation, customers will need to go through what we call a decision-making process first and answer some questions. This is to ensure that the complaint that we were receiving relates to penalty provisions of the Act and not a breach of a tenancy or rooming agreement. So if you have a disagreement over how a bond is getting paid out or you have a breach of a tenancy or rooming agreement, then this is a process that's dealt with by our dispute resolution team. So we have done previous webinars on resolving disputes. They're all available on our website. If there's been a breach of the penalty provisions of the Act, then this is what the RTA's investigations team can deal with. So timeframes do apply for making a complaint with our investigations team and more information is available on our website, rta.qrd.gov.au and also forward slash investigations. So make sure you have signed up for our e-news so that we can keep you informed on any key topics or changes. Um, if you have a colleague or you know someone else in the rental sector that would benefit from being regularly informed, um, please get them to sign up as well. So we do produce various educational resources, our webinars on tenancy legislation and key topics, as well as our Talking Tenancy podcast series. So accessing both of these through our website or for your podcast through your preferred app. So Kath, I'm going to get you to come back and I think we will go back over to the questions. So just bear with me while we just pull that over here. Thanks, Lauren. I know that you've been um, answering quite a few questions there and acknowledging people. So thank you very much. Um, we might just go way back up here. So bear with me. Okay, so I think um, what about bond tops ups from Irene? I think that was actually, you've actually answered that with our um, bulk bond lodgements. You can do top ups as well as new bonds. Uh, Rebecca's asking, is the 10 days starting from the receiving it into the trust account or receiving it as a bond against the tenant? Um, well, that is actually, as soon as you do take, as soon as you receipt it in your trust account, you have actually accepted it. Would that be a fair answer, Kath? Really, so yes, thanks. Yeah. Um, for Martin, will the BPA code change each time? So the reference BPA reference will be unique to that lodgement. So um, yes, the reference number changes every different lodgement that you submit. And Rebecca's just asking, so the tenants don't need to sign anything. They don't, do they, when they use any of the No, they services? don't, but they're part of the process is that we will send them an email um, to make sure that they um, agree to what's been lodged as part of the, the um, bulk bond lodgement. For an example, we had one yesterday where we sent an email to the tenant to verify the details and the agent had actually got, had entered 51 Bond Street rather than 33. So the tenant came back to us and said, no, that's actually incorrect. So we were able to then confirm with all the parties and change it and make sure that it was all the correct information before that went through the process. And by using the QGov um, identification process, that's, that kind of becomes your identity, that kind of becomes your signature, isn't it? So that is definitely the signature. And, we, and the good thing about that is we know 
um, that, that they are who they are, they, that they say they are, and that that is um, a very strong authenticated digital signature. Yeah. So if you are using um, web services for people who've actually made the inquiries about do you have to have the tent sign anything, um, the only way you'd need them to sign if you're going to lodge it by paper form or they don't have a unique email address. So keep that in mind that if they don't have an email address and they can't do the QGov login and identify themselves and um, go through the process, then you probably will need to do the paper form. Um, hang on, Kath, we're just going through a bit more. Um, so um, is it Maria? Um, Using Property Me, which I know Maria happens to be one of the real estate agencies um, trust account program, has the functionality for pay BPAY. So can we be issued with a bill of code and BPAY reference number to be able to lodge as bulk payment that way? So I think we actually, once they do submit it, we actually then send um, the agent the bill of reference code and the BPAY code, don't we, Kath? Yes. So you would have to go through the process. You would need to add all the bulk, uh, the lodgements to the bulk, the submit, and then you would be given that the pay code and the reference number that you could then pay that through. Yeah. And as I said, for a licensed agent now, the um, Agents Financial Administration Act has now changed to, a regulation has changed to allow that B pay to come from your um, trust account. Um, Elaine's just asking as well, can we lodge with a mobile number and no email address? At this point in time, we do require an email address. Again, it's part of the process that we email the tenants to make sure that we get their confirmation and their signature basically on, on the digital form. So at this point in time, yes, we do require an email address. Um, the tenants also require um, a unique email address to access the, the QGov platform. Um, Martin's back again is what if tenants share the same email address? I know this has happened to you too, hasn't it, Kath? Yeah, it has. So I am one of those people that share an email address with their partner. Um, and when he went on to MyGov and used our joint email account, when come my time to actually get onto Medicare, I couldn't actually use that email account, that email address um, because he'd already used it. Um, so my solution to that was I went on and I created a Gmail account for myself and I used that email address purely to access um, government websites um, because you all, it's just standard practice that you need a unique email address. So if that's an option for your tenants, perhaps that moving forward is a good way for them to actually have availability to these online services. Yeah. And again, too, like obviously if they don't have, if it's a co-tenancy and a co-contributor and one doesn't have an email address, then potentially you're looking at lodging that by paper form, aren't you, Kath? Correct. Yeah. Um, so Tracy's just asking here, if a tenant pays their rent and bond in one transaction and it's accidentally picked up as rent and goes straight to the owner, is there a penalty to the agent for this? Well, in a roundabout sort of way, because the rent and like you're obviously using the um, the, uh, the receipting in and the payment for another purpose, you could potentially say yes, but obviously you are going to act very swiftly and rectify that straight away. Um, so, and then obviously provide some evidence if someone did actually do a complaint. Um, Shirley's just asking, Anne, which I think we actually answered this too, will BPAY reference change each lodgement? I think you said yes, wasn't that right, Kath? Yes, it will. The reference will change each, yeah. individual, each lodgement. Um, so we've got quite a few people um, asking that. Um, likewise, again, with the, um, with the email. And yes, look, a lot of older couples do only have one email. So again, if they're not, um, as Kath said in her example, she had to sign up with a Gmail or a Hotmail account for herself. If that's not the case, then again, you're probably going back to that paper form. Um, so I think I've actually just mentioned quite a few of that. Um, Dean's just asking in relation to the QGov account, um, Kath, in relation to international students. Um, 
So I know that uh, this year we did add a couple of extra items for identification. We did. Um, we added the um, international visas. Um, this is a work in progress. We're aware that um, it's you know that it's hard for a lot of international students if they haven't got their Medicare card issued straight away, or they don't have a, a license um, to to meet that 100 point. So the RTA is continually trying to is working with QGov um, to broaden the um, documents and make the um, process available to a wider range of our customers. Yeah. And Chris is just saying, like, sure, the driver's license is suitable enough ID. Um, and, I, and that's probably, Chris, just so that you know, QGov is a separate process. Um, it's just purely an identification process that the RTA um, uses from the government. Um, it's not the RTA process. So we, it's, there are two processes when you use the, um, any of our RTA web services. So QGov is one process to get you through identification through them first. And then we have our process as well. Um, Martin's just asking, how long does a tenant have to pay for their top up? So the, the rent's been increased and the bond has been increased as well. Kath, so, oh, well, I can answer that for you, sorry. Um, that's one month. They've got one month to um, pay that for you. Um, and, and what happens if the tenant does not pay the bond top up within the 10 days? We need to finalise the bulk transaction. So that's, I think, what you were saying before, Kath, that you can go in and edit, can't you? You yes, can potentially so, remove... Um, I would go in and remove that um, increase from your bulk and then go proceed to go ahead and lodge the bulk. And then when you actually do get the money from the tenant, add that to your next bulk. To your next batch, yeah. So what, what's a session timeout? So like when you use web services, is there like a timeout that people have? And obviously property managers and agents out there are busy during the day, so they probably do multiple tasks. Yes, definitely. So if you get interrupted a lot, which I'm sure you do, uh, if you start a, a session on the, on the web service and you, you're called away to do a million things, um, it will time out um, after two hours um, and you will need to log back into it. So that's just a security thing that if you've stepped away from your computer, it's a fairly standard practice that if they... If there's no activity within two hours, it will actually automatically lock you out. And Kath, I think it's also two very clear instructions on our website. And one of our statements uh, we ha have is that any person knowingly submitting false or misleading details in web services is committing an offence under Queensland law. So can you give today, a, a, like an audience today, an example of this? So I guess we've mentioned before that it, um, it is sometimes difficult because of that, the emails, um, that it, it's a mandatory field. And if, if your tenants share an email, um, if, if one, you enter one and then you just make up the other, like no one at no one, um, that, that's not helpful. And again, it could fall into that false and misleading information because it's very evident that that is not their real email address. Yeah. And we, you know, as the RTA, we do lots of checks and balances as well. And also to our systems can pull data reports on people who are using those constant false in email addresses. And again, as you said previously, Lynn, the paper um, process is always there um, in those situations. Yeah. So I think it's also good news that, you know, we launched this on Tuesday and with like within a very short time, I think you said it was like within 20 minutes, we received our first bulk bond lodgings via web services. So since Tuesday, how many have we actually received um, who have actually gone down this path? So from this, uh, this morning when I checked, um, we'd already received 56 um, bulk lodgements and that totaled um, over 300 individual um, lodgements, a mixture of bond increases and, and new bonds. So um, we have spoken to a couple of the, the agents that have lodged using this service and they were glowing reports on it. They just couldn't believe how simple it was and they're loving the one fee pay transaction for, for all their um, lodgements that they're doing. 
Um, just be conscious of time, we're coming to an end, but thanks Bernard for your comment in relation to um, student accommodation as well. Um, Alice, I think it's Alison maybe, um, asking the 30 day bond top up, does that 30 days from the notification of the rent increase or 30 days from when the um, commencement of the renewal? Um, obviously I'm thinking here that like when the rent has actually increased and you're asking for the more, you know, to, for the bond to be topped up, that's when they've actually got the time to pay. Kath, a couple of questions for you, please. If you lodge by post, can you still pay by BPAY rather than a check? Um, there is a possibility that we could create BPAYs for you, but that's not our preferred option and that's not our standard practice. Okay. So if you are posting in, it's usually with the check. Correct. Um, otherwise, that's why we've created this new web services. Um, can we lodge paper lodgements by email? No. Can we? No. So only thanks, Elaine. Only the Department yeah. of Housing. Sorry, what was that, Kat? Only if it's a Department of Housing involvement can we okay. accept them. Okay, so we will accept only Department of Housing um, lodgements by email. That would be it. Um, and I do agree, Chris, two checks are a little bit backwards. Um, but again, this is why we have created this new web services because as Kath said before, a lot of research, a lot of um, consultations have been done over the years where the agents have been wanting to look at doing bulk lodgements online using the BPAY as well. Um, I think we will just end it there, Kat, because I think we have actually um, got to our um, time as such. So, look, um, our website has a lot of information, all our forms and educational resources available at rta.qld.gov.au. And as a final reminder, please make sure that you do always use the latest RTA forms. Um, our Friendly Contact Centre is available on Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 5, 1300 366 311. And keep in mind too, if you are got some issues with web services, our staff in our call centre have been trained and they can actually assist you um, going through any challenges as well. So remember too, our survey is going to come up shortly about um, the webinar and also we'd love your feedback, what topics you'd like to know more about and also your feedback on web services as well. So thanks, Kath and Lauren, for helping out today. No problem. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming and, along. And yeah, and thanks, everyone, for joining us. And we'll see you next time. The webinar will now end.